Hey, welcome back to Web Squadron. A question has been posed to us about what's the difference between the different types of positioning and when should you use them and are they important and can they have an impact on your page? So I'm talking about the inline auto positioning and also the custom one that a lot of people don't use. But first let's break it down into why you may want to use it and how you can reduce some of the bloat or some of the extra HTML coding that can appear on your page, but you won't really see it. But what can appear on your page and how we can get around that. I'm Imran Sadiq, part of Web Squadron, and I hope you like, subscribe, and join in followers so that you can keep up to date with lots of things about WordPress, Elemental, and how you can help yourself, your business, and your customer. So let's just break it down into basics first, okay? I'm gonna do something really, really simple here. I'm just gonna create something that has, let's go for five columns, okay? That is pretty simple, okay? There's nothing scientifically magical going on here, right? Let me just give some, uh, let's just put in a bit of margin there, just so it's in the middle of the page. What we have is five columns sitting in a section. This section, we are gonna create it and we're gonna call it a box. And I'm just gonna make it a thousand just so we can see it on the page, yep. Okay, now in each of these columns, I am going to just add in a, no, we won't add an image, we'll just add in a header. And I'm just gonna copy it, paste, paste, paste and paste again, like so. That was dead simple, wasn't it? Right, okay, why am I showing you this? We've got a column, we've got one section with five columns, okay? Each one of these columns, okay, at the moment, is about 200 pixels in width. And I say about, because at the moment, I haven't gone in and set this to be no gap for the column. And the minimum height, let's just put it as minimum. That should now be 200 pixels, because it's a thousand pixels for the section, 200 per column. That's simple, you with me, comprende? Okay, cool. Now, if we were to then start adding in further elements, let's add in a button over here, and we'll add in a video over here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because we're using five columns, we are starting to add on a lot of bloat or HTML coding onto our website, okay? Let me just get rid of those two things I just added. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, and if you're very um, strongly minded or keen to keep the performance of your website really good in terms of responsive time, in terms of how it scores on page speed insights and things like that, going for a section with five, six, seven, eight, nine columns is not a good thing. Likewise, sticking in too many inner sections over and over and over again also is not a great way to build your website because again, you're adding on a lot of bloat. DOM, the rendering of elements, you might go, well, it's not really an element, is it? It's just a column, column, a column. It's just a room within a house. The section is your house, the column is your room. Actually, it does start to matter. So I'm just showing you, that is your, that's sometimes a traditional way of how we tend to build things. We might say we want um, a header here, we want some text over here, we want an image over here, maybe some icons, you might have a sidebar or a menu system or whatever going down the right hand side, okay? There's nothing wrong with this, okay? It is okay to do this if this is what you want, but what I'm gonna try and show you is two other ways that you can do this, which are gonna be a little more leaner in terms of how it's gonna look, not just on your website, but how you create it. So let's create another section, but this time, this section is gonna be just one column, okay? Again, it's gonna be a box of a thousand and we're just gonna say no gap, like so, okay? And set the minimum height to be zero. I always do that, minimum height zero. I like to control how big it's gonna look. Unless it's a big slider, then it's different. So we have one column, okay? One room. Inside of that column, I'm now going to just copy this header and paste it in like so. I'm then gonna duplicate this header, which is the same as if I had dragged another header in from above in terms of pasting, or if I had dragged it in over here like so, okay? Now, as soon as you add in another item or a widget or an element, they start to stack. That's just how it works, okay? And you should know this by now. So every time you add in additional items, they stack above one another, which is why sometimes stacking items is the best way to create your own bespoke icon box or testimonial carousel or whatever you wanna do, okay? Bear that in mind. Now, if we want 
You can see now the width of that element at your heading text here. It goes all the way across, 100%. It goes all the way across the column, okay? Just like if I was to add in a icon over here, like so, that icon stretches across the whole screen, okay? Or the width of the screen that I've set for the section, which isn't great. So let's just get rid of that. Let's just get rid of that, whoa. Like so, like so, here we go, here we go. Right, so what we're gonna do now is put it side by side. And this is where we're gonna use inline positioning. Okay, so this is one of the ways to do it. And there is a second way we're gonna do as well. So if I now go over to this column here and I click on it and I go to advanced, and then you go down to positioning, you go down to width, advanced, positioning, width. And I am going to pick in line. Just to let you know, though, default and full width are exactly the same. Okay? Don't go, well, what's full width going to do? No, it's the same as default. We now go for in line. Now, when we go for in line, it's slightly scrunched up a bit because it gets rid of um, what it basically does is it gets rid of the widget space, which is normally 20 pixels. Okay? But what you will notice is the second header stretches across the screen. The first header, if you look at it now, it's only for that section. Okay, or that element. And if you think it's too tight, obviously go into advanced and just give it a bit of padding. So I'm just gonna give this about 15 here and 15 here. Whoops, the days I did it on the column, didn't I? Don't do it on the column, you fool. Right, so let's just go to that bit there and just give a 15 here and 15 there. So you can now see that yes, it is uh, reduce the width of that element, but we still have a bit of padding on the left and right. And you can do at the top and bottom as well. So don't feel like, oh, it's too tight now. No, you can mess around with it. Let's now go to the second header. And this one, we're also gonna go to advanced, positioning, and we're gonna go for inline auto. Now, as soon as we do that, the word inline is the clue here, inline. It automatically sticks them in line. Now, if you've got five elements that are stacked, you've got to do it on each one before they fully go in line, okay? Now, so that's, I'm not going to go over too much about this because that's pretty, pretty simple, yeah? Two items, we've made them in line, they are now inside the section. But that section is a thousand pixels. Those two elements at the moment are on the left-hand side. What if we want them to be on the right side or the middle? Well, Again, I would like to think that you're already aware of this, okay? If you click on the section, okay, and you go to layout, you have the ability to set the vertical align. That is gonna be for what's, how are the columns aligned within the section. What you wanna do is go to the actual column. So we've gone to the column, there's only one column, right? You go to layout, we have the ability to do vertical align and horizontal. The vertical, you know, top, middle, bottom, um, depending on how you space things out, you got space between around and evenly, but I'm going to talk about those with the horizontal because it becomes a little bit more self-explanatory. If we now go to horizontal, well, start is start. They're at the left-hand side. We know that. Center sticks them both in the center. You now know that end is going to take them over that way, all the way to the right-hand side. But if we go for space between, it now sticks them opposite ends of the the polar spectrum, all the way end to the multiverse. And in the middle, we get a space in the middle. That can be fine if you have a logo and a menu, maybe. Or maybe you've got some text and an image and you wanna keep them nicely spaced out. There's always gonna be a space between them. You could also go for spaced around. So what you now get is you have a bit of space here, some there and some over there. Now the space here, bear in mind, okay, let me just get rid of these, the padding I gave here. Okay, there is our section. Okay, can you see the section? I'll just make sure my mouse is not blurring it. Can you see we have to the left of the first header, we have about an inch worth of space. We've got about an inch in the middle, and then we've got about an inch going over here as well. Okay, that is not the, that, that there, let me just get this right here, that there is the edge of the section. Okay, right. What we could also do, is go back to the column and we could go for space evenly. This now is a bit more even in how it is spacing out, okay? So the space around is, it does a bit around, but I tend to find that you're either gonna go for space between or space evenly, just because of the way it works, okay? 
What is good about doing this? You reduce the amount of HTML you are adding compared to having five individual columns. But inline auto doesn't necessarily mean a good, good thing, okay? Too much inline auto and you're gonna get messages on GT metrics and your page speed insights that there is too much inline auto and that can affect your performance score. Okay, so don't assume that you've suddenly made everything wonderful by jumping from here to here because there's a good chance that you do this and you'll get no performance issue whatsoever. You do this and you will get a bit of a performance issue. So just have a think about how many inline autos you're gonna be doing. That being said, even though I've just said it's not gonna affect your performance with having five columns, don't overdo a page with five, six, seven, eight, four, three, whatever, too many columns, okay? Because the column is a room. So like I said, a uh, section is a house, right? You've got a house with three columns. So a three roomed house, three bedroomed house, three roomed house, okay? That's fine. You now got another house, another section with 10 columns. Why would you do that? 10 columns and intersections and whatever else going on in there. You now got a house that's turning into a block of flats and there's more maintenance, right? Block of flats, plumbing, heating, water, all of that. So just think about it in terms of don't overdo how many columns you got. Now let's go on to the second way that we can uh, limit the HTML. Let's just duplicate this section. Okay, let's just give it a bit of breathing space from the one above there. And we're gonna get rid of this header here and we're gonna get rid of this header in again. And I'm just gonna add in a brand new header. Like so, there we go, wonderful. Okay, we got our header, okay. Now, again, we're gonna go over to this header and we're gonna to go to advanced and we're gonna to go to positioning. Same thing we did above, but this time, rather than picking inline auto, we're gonna pick custom. Now, as soon as you do custom, it's gonna kind of go into the center nine times out of 10, and it's gonna do the same thing that happened up here. It's now tight around the element, unless you add in some padding for that element. But if we now go over to the custom width, okay, if I set this to be, I mean, I would say that you're better off using percentage than pixel, okay? Pixel you only want to do when you want to be very specific on how big it is going to be. So you might have a logo. You add in a logo and the logo has to be 150 pixels in width. You don't want it to be percentage. You don't want it to grow and shrink depending on the screen size. No, it must be 150 pixels, okay? But what you're probably going to go for is percentage. Now if I do 100, okay, that is now 100% of the column. Well, it's a bit like, well, what was the point of picking this custom then? Because it's no different than default, right? However, let me just make this to be 20. That is now 20%. Let me now just duplicate this. Duplicate, 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 duplicate. Can we see what's happened here? Each one of these now, if I go in and go to advanced positioning, 20%, 20, 20, 20%. 20 One column, 20%. Hmm, what is going on here? Now, if I just get rid of this last one over here, right? This is still going to be taking up 20%. Look, it's the same size as the very top section, but we now have some spacing in between. Why have we got spacing? Well, we've only used up 80% of the thousand pixels we still have 200 pixels to spare because 20% of a thousand is 200 pixels. So I might go over to this very last one that we have over there or even up there where my finger is. If I go to advanced and positioning now, rather than it being 20, I'm gonna make it 40. Well, look, we're still within the realms of the 1000 pixels. We have 20, 20, 20, which makes 60. No need for a calculator. Count with me, said the cult. And then we have 40 over here, we get 100. So what you can do using the custom is in a really, 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 really clever way, okay, you can if you want. Let me just get rid of this little bit of spacing here. Let me just get rid of the padding we have here for the bottom, like so. Actually, no, let's not do that, let's not do that. Stay with me, mate. So what I've, so what I've now got is one section, one column, four elements, but I have now positioned them to be where I want, okay? 
You can, if you want, do this as well and start to mess around. But if you do that, when you drag the columns, it's going to kind of mess up your percentages for how you did your positioning. I would say go in, take the time and just set your positioning up. Look, I've already gone and messed this one up now. I shouldn't have done that, should I? There we go. Let's do that. So we have three ways of adding elements, multiple elements on the same row to a page. We have your traditional five column approach. We have your inline auto where you can start to turn items from being stacked to being a horizontal list and we can decide on how they are placed on the screen, start, center, end, spaced evenly and all of that. And then we have the more dynamic way I feel like of doing it. And I probably shouldn't use the word dynamic because dynamic means totally different things, but the more responsive or flexible way or responsive way of setting out your layout, okay? So 20%, 20%, 20%, 40%, 40%. It's pretty a cool way to do things, I think, where you're reducing the amount of columns you're creating. And it just means that, you know, if you decide you want to set up your one column, okay, and you now want to give some padding to that entire column of 20, and the background style is now going to be, say, uh, let's go for a image. Let's go for, let's go for this image here, this crazy dark layout image. Oh, why did I do that? That was a really bad one, wasn't it? Because it's not even uh, fixed. No repeat size is going to be covered. You know, let's now, let's just, in fact, let's just do it now. Okay, let's make the style of our text to be white, like so. Let's copy, paste style, paste style. Now, when I paste style here, it's going to go back to 20%, okay? All right, don't worry about that. We know about that. Okay, let's go to uh, this section here, advanced positioning, let's make it 40. Okay, look, I'm doing this on the fly. Okay, look, so very quickly, we have added in, um, I mean, obviously, please don't sit there going, oh, look, that's so ugly. Look at the way that looks. Look, I'm not styling everything at the moment, but I've added in some padding for the column, adding in a background, and it's now stretching out across all the elements, right? Because Sometimes to do that, you're going to do a section, right? And then you might put in a column and you might put in an inner section because you're trying to get this effect because you don't want the background image to stretch the full section. You want it just to be a boxed width or whatever. So by using the column and the custom positioning, you can achieve that. Look, I hope that's been really useful. I hope that's going to help you out now with um, playing around and being maybe a bit more confident with using the advanced positioning. Remember, inline auto or custom. And when you have the custom, I mean, don't forget, you do have stuff like this as well, vertical align as well. You know, uh, absolute and fixed. There's videos on that. And maybe you, I normally use that for when I'm doing a sticky button somewhere on the screen. But custom, inline auto, have a play and experiment a little bit with that and just, um, just see how much, well, there are ways you can go and check how much HTML coding there are, but I don't want to go into that, okay? But look, I hope this is really good for you. Like, subscribe, follow, and we shall see you very, very soon.